Okay, so you have a 7950X3D, which at this moment is the most powerful AM5 CPU out there, and for some reasons you want more performance on it. Understandable, I have your same issue. Maybe you just want more efficiency out of it, or just a quieter system that draws a bit less power without compromising performance at all. And in any one of these cases, this is the right video for you. So welcome back at the Motion PSUs and welcome back at this undervolt tutorial for the Ryzen 9 7950X 3D. Now this video is actually gonna be valid for every X 3D CPU from the 7000 Ryzen series. So the 7900X 3D and even 7800X 3D are gonna work plenty fine. Now, little disclaimer, it's gonna be an in BIOS tutorial, but you can also do this in Ryzen Master if you don't wanna go in your BIOS, the same settings, but I do recommend you do it in the BIOS if possible. And now I know that different BIOSes from different brands will be a bit different with the naming, but no worries, I got you covered. I will say the different names as the tutorial, but if that is not enough, if you go in my CPU undervolting playlist, you're gonna see if you check my other ALD undervolting tutorials, for example, for the Ryzen 7 7700X or the 7900X, I do use different motherboards. So I should have pretty much every single motherboard covered. I have an ASRock video, I have a Gigabyte video, I have an MSI video. Today's video is on ASUS, and I even have a Biostar video on my 1700X 3D undervolting guide. So if you cross-reference with those videos and the settings I give you here today, you should be fine to do this in your BIOS. So before we go, promise me one thing. If in the end, the video is helpful, you will drop a like and maybe subscribe to the channel to support me. It really helps me out a lot and uh, helps me keep making those videos for you guys. So with that said, let's go in the BIOS and let's start tweaking. Okay, so here we are in the BIOS. Now again, depending on your motherboard's vendor, this section that we're in is gonna be called a bit different. Now in my case, it's called AI Tweaker, okay? But it may be called Overclocking, Tweaking, tuner or something like that. Now, a little few things before we actually begin with a proper undervolt, okay? Now, this is not part of the undervolt, but hear me out. Resizable bar, make sure you have it on. And also, you want to run your RAM with XMP on. So in Asus case, you do that by going in AI overclocking tuning and turning on DOCP, okay? Ideally DOCP1 if, if it manages to work for you, okay? So do this in your BIOS as well. But anyways, this is not Part of the undervolting and it is something you should test separately. Now let's get going with the actual undervolt. Now we're gonna have two different presets, okay? So the first preset is gonna be if you want dynamic performance, basically keeping the CPU original behavior going up and down with frequency, and it's gonna be the best for gaming, and it's gonna be good for productivity as well. So let's go straight ahead. You wanna go under advanced actually, it's gonna be the same for every BIOS, okay? So you go in advanced, not the AI tweaker section, and you go into AMD overclocking. You accept this, and now you go into the precision boost overdrive settings, and you set the precision boost overdrive to be advanced, okay? This is key. Now, once you're here, you wanna go on platform thermal throttle control, which again, may be called a bit different, but it's basically the temperature at which your CPU is gonna throttle down, and put it on manual. And now here you wanna put 80. Now what this is, this is the temperature in degrees Celsius at which your CPU will dial back. This is not gonna lose your performance. Matter of fact, it's gonna improve it because we are also gonna be undervolting it and we are gonna basically shift the curve. If you want your CPU to run a bit higher, it's gonna be a bit more noisy, your system, and it's also gonna draw a bit more power, but you can put 85, no problem. You can also put 90, no problem. Just don't go higher than 90. And if you wanna have just a really efficient and cool system, because maybe it's summer, put 75. But if you wanna trust me, just put 80, okay? 80 is gonna be plenty fine. So put 80, and now you wanna go down under in Curve Optimizer, not GFX Curve Optimizer, because that is your integrated GPU optimization, and we don't wanna do that. Have a separate video for APUs for that. So Curve Optimizer, all cores, negative, and now here you wanna put 20. This is gonna be very much dependent on the quality of the silicon of your CPU, okay? So you wanna put 20, but if 20 is not stable for you, and again, you wanna test this overclock after you do it, you may wanna lower this to 15. The worst possible CPU in the market will handle 10, okay? So if you have a really bad CPU, just put 10. If you have a decent one, 20 is gonna be fine. If you're in between, do 15. If you're very lucky, you may be able to do 25, okay? And personally, I have not had a single CPU able to do 30 yet. So just do 20, okay? 
trust me. So now with this, you can basically hit F10, save and exit. And we have actually completed the first part of our tutorial, which is a dynamic setting. A few words, okay, this is a 7950X 3D. It has eight cores with 3DV cache on it and eight normal cores. So it is basically a 7800X stuck on the side of a 1700X 3D. So if you are doing this just for gaming, yes, you could also just disable your cores to have just eight cores, 16 threads, but I'm not gonna show you how to do it because I think like you should have bought a 7800X 3D if you wanted to do that. I think you should keep all the cores enabled, okay? Now let's actually go ahead and do the static option. So if you wanna do the static one, you want to reset these because you don't need to follow these settings again. If you just care about the dynamic one, you can close the video, drop a like, subscribe, and it's over. But if you want to stay for the static settings, let's put everything back on default and let's get started, okay? So again, remember to have your resizable bar enabled, to have your DOCP enabled, again, not part of the undervolt. But now at this point, you want to go on the eight eye tweaker section for real this time, and you want to find something that's called CPU core frequency. Now, in my case, it's not letting me change the CPU speed. Why it's not? Well, because ASUS BIOS is locked out, okay? Which is kind of unfortunate, if you ask me. But if you can change your core clock, you wanna put your core clock multiplier, okay? You wanna put it to 48, so that it goes at 4.8 gigahertz, if you can do it, but it's not letting me. So anyways, I will just show you how to do the voltage in case you, like me, have your BIOS locked. So if you have it locked, you wanna go on CPU SOC voltage, put it on manual. And now after, again, setting the core clock, you wanna go into here and hit 1.2. Now you can do this even without actually changing the core clock. You, you will still gain the benefits, but you may need a bit more voltage. How can you change this? Well, the lower you go with this, the lower your temperature is gonna be and the better your CPU is gonna run. But the lower you go with this, the less likely you are for your CPU to be stable. So the absolute minimum I've seen is 1.15 and you need to be really lucky for this to work. Whereas on average, 1.175 on a little bit worse CPUs will work and uh, most CPUs will work with 1.2. If you're very unlucky, you may want to have to go up to 1.225, but I wouldn't go higher than this because again, this CPU has 3DV cache and it is very sensible to voltage. So I really wouldn't go higher to keep your CPU running well. Now you may be asking, okay, do I need to change anything else in the BIOS? Well, ASUS performance enhancements, if you have an ASUS board, you may want to enable this. This is going to increase your power limits a bit. Honestly, not really needed. Core performance boost, definitely do not enable this one because it's gonna automatically overclock everything and just mess up your settings. And really that's about it. Like one extra thing you could do is you could put the FCLK to be like half of like your DRAM frequency, but really this is more into RAM tuning. So we're basically done. I don't recommend you do anything else. Maybe tweak your fans a little bit if you want, but this is about it. So guys, if the video was helpful, uh, please, again, remember your promise and subscribe to the channel and maybe stick around for more videos. I cover GPUs as well. And if, if for some reason the video didn't work, drop a comment, tell me why. I'll try to help you out. Okay. And see you guys hopefully in another one and have a very good day. Bye bye.